Good day, amigos, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Spy Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. How are you guys doing? Um, I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about um, something that's been on my mind for a little while now and uh, a little reinforced by last night's uh, performance by Ryan Garcia. You saw that uh, that card. It was basically a, a card of mismatches, you know, just um, uh, trying to boost some of the, the fighters of uh, from uh, Golden Boy or Car de la Olla promotions and try to make them look good uh, fighting opponents that are not at their at their level. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the comments that that some people have made uh, in the last few weeks, uh, specifically after um, after and before a week or two before uh, Subir Matias fought uh, Ergashev, and now some of the comments that from from uh, boxers, uh, experts, uh, commentators have been. Uh, basically denying that Matias has either uh, good skills or is kind of flat-footed fighter. Uh, basically, uh, just not giving Matias the credit he deserves, specifically before and after uh, Ergashev's defeat. Um, the excuse was later on that Ergashev uh, was not who they thought. I mean, basically uh, not giving credit to Subria Matias' performance. And the comments, going back to to what uh, inspired me to do this video this morning here Sunday in Miami, Florida, uh, was that some of the comments that I've heard and I've read either on my YouTube channel or other YouTube channels, uh, some of the other uh, comments that I've heard is that, um, well, who has Matias fought? Um, why do you guys are so hyped about Matias when he hasn't fought anybody, all right? And when you start uh, discussing boxing uh, with people that are knowledgeable about boxing and they just follow, uh, you know, social media champions like Ryan Garcia and and uh, other other champions that or so-called champions like Rolly Romero and, you know, guys that actually have a, a good uh, or a high social media following, well, you know, my opinion is you shouldn't argue with them, you shouldn't discuss with them because basically they're showing their ignorance uh, and they haven't done their homework, all right? They haven't done their homework. They don't know who Suriel Matias is, they don't know who... Uh, the opponents of Subre Matia have been, which have been great opponents, undefeated, live dogs, guys that were ranked uh, very high. Um, actually, uh, the fights that Masia, Matias has had have been uh, title eliminated, uh, eliminated uh, bouts with guys that weren't defeated. And Matias has been able to dominate them, uh, put them away, and make them quit on their, on their stool. All right, so when you say, and I don't want to hear that again, when you say who has Matias fought and Matias fighters aren't that good, do the research, all right, and before you put your foot in your mouth and say stupid stuff with that other knowledgeable fans actually uh, are aware of, you know, we, we, and I consider myself a knowledgeable boxing fan because this not only have I been following boxing since I was a, a little kid, but I was a boxer and I also have a coach. I'm a boxing coach and I follow boxing all the time. All right, guys, I'm not just a writer. I'm not just a YouTube uh, uh, fan of boxing. No, guys, you know, this is what I do for a living. I, I, I don't know it all. I, I don't, I'm not saying that, but I do have the experience uh, in order to, to to uh, shed some light on 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 uh, prospects and on fighters that actually uh, 
have potential to become great. And I've been saying this for a long time about uh, Subriel Matias. Ever since I first saw him a few years ago, I said, this guy's going to be a champion one day. He's going to make his island proud. And so far, so good. He's, he's, he hasn't had a, a, an easy route. But today we're going to talk about a little bit. Of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a link between what happened last night between um, Ryan Garcia and Oscar Duarte, his victory over um, an unknown Oscar Duarte who actually uh, uh, ha had in his resume uh, a high number of knockouts. All right, you saw the fight yesterday. Um, I don't have to tell you about Ryan Garcia's performance. I think it was mediocre. I don't think Ryan Garcia, to be honest with you, is, is a fighter that that, that um, that's a high level, has high IQ boxing. He does have skills and he has, uh, you know, a, a good amateur pedigree. But uh, I don't see him being able to beat the top dogs at 140. And how am I um, connecting Matias with... Uh, with Ryan Garcia, well, I'll tell you how. After the fight, Ryan Garcia has stated that he would like to fight Rolly Romero for the, um, I believe it's the WBA title. Um, Rolly Romero, as you all know, has a belt, and it's what they call an email belt. I mean, he, he didn't beat any champions to to have it, uh, to win it. So, uh, why does Ryan Garcia? who thinks, who believes, and this might just be uh, promotion, self-promoting type of uh, talk, but uh, who, who actually, he, he says that he's the best, that he's gonna be able to beat everybody, uh, fight the low or the weak link of the 140 pound division, all right? When there's so many people at 140 pounds that, that I believe are, would uh, sweep the rug, sweep the floor with uh, with Rolly Romero and with Ryan Garcia. All right, why doesn't Ryan Garcia pick Suriel Matias? Why doesn't Ryan Garcia pick the winner between Regis and uh, uh, Regis Progre and Devin Haney? Why doesn't he mention uh, Suriel Matias? Why doesn't anybody mention Suriel Matias for that? For that, for that uh, matter, um, and the, the the true reason is that uh, boxing today has become more about uh, who makes the most money, and not about who is the best fighter in each division. All right, we do have some fighters that that I consider great, and in, in some of the divisions. But if you look at the um, ring rankings we're going to go over this real quick and i want you to honestly tell me all right how do they come up with this ranking all right uh ring magazine has uh teofimo lopez as number one uh the champion uh he hasn't uh, you know he, he he's been talking about not fighting again retiring you know doing this uh yanking everybody's chain saying that he can beat everybody but at the same time he says he's, he, he's not getting enough money. Well, that shows me that this individual is not interested in, in looking for legacy and being the best. He's just looking for uh, a payday, all right? Uh, number one, they have Ring Magazine that has Josh Taylor as number one, 19 fights, one loss, 13 knockouts. He's ranked number one over Regis, who is a champion. How does that make any sense? I don't understand, all right? Regis rack number two. He's a WBC champion. Then number three is Jose Ramirez. I, don't, I can't remember the last time Jose Ramirez fought. I think it was earlier this year or maybe yeah, earlier this year, I think he was. Uh, he had a really good fight. I, I was actually impressed with his, with his performance. But he's uh, Jose Ramirez is ranked number three, all right? Number three. Uh, by Ring Magazine. And number four, we have Subriel Matias. All right, so we have Josh Taylor who lost, Regis Progre, rank number two. Uh, again, Josh Taylor, rank number one. 
Regis Prograde, rank number two. Jose Ramirez, who doesn't have a championship, rank number three. Subriel Matias, who's knocked everybody out and has a body in his resume, is rank number four. Now, could you explain that to me? I don't, I, I, I don't understand the logic behind this ranking. Uh, let's look at the other number, uh, the other, um, the other people in this ranking, uh, junior welterweight division. According to Ring Magazine, we have Richardson Hitchens, 17 and 0 with seven knockouts. He's at number five. Then we have Jack Catterall. He's ranked number six. He's got one defeat, 28 fights, one defeat, 13 knockouts. Then we had Arnold Barboza, 28 fights, 10 knockouts. He's ranked number seven. Then number eight, Gary Antoine Russell. Number nine, Sander Martin. And Kenneth Sims Jr., number 10. Now, which one of these guys is going to step up? And I believe that uh, in order to sh shut the naysayers up, <laughs> Uh, Subriel Matias needs to fight one of these guys and it's not that Subriel doesn't want to fight these guys it's that these guys don't want any part of Subriel Matias they have um, they trying to find and you know when you're going home and there's a big traffic jam you're trying to find shortcuts in order to get, to get home easier uh, a route that not too many people know that's what these people are doing man they're looking for the short route the shortcut to becoming champion. And the shortcut, uh, the weak link is Rolly Romero, and that's the reason why Ryan Garcia said that he would like to fight a Rolly Romero. So all those critics, all those guys that are that are uh, tuning to my channel, that are making comments about, you know, who has Matias fought, Matias hasn't fought anybody, stuff like that. Just ask yourself, why is that? Why hasn't any of these guys called out Subriel Matias. I believe that Arnold Barboza is one that called out Subriel Matias. Hey, if if I was Subriel, I'd jump on that immediately. Okay, that's a legitimate uh, challenge. That's That guy is a le legitimate uh, opponent in that weight division. Uh, I think Matias would destroy him. Would destroy him inside of seven, eight rounds. The most, all right? Jack Catterall is another... Uh, another great opportunity for him. I mean, he beat Josh Taylor, in my opinion, the opinion of, of a lot of people that saw that fight. So uh, why doesn't Jack Catterall say, hey, I want Matias' title, all right? Because they're looking for the easy way out. They're looking for the shortcut, what I just mentioned. They're trying to fight uh, somebody that they can make more money and an uh, easier fight than Subriel Matias. Then we have Josh Taylor. Why doesn't Josh Taylor try to gain his title back? Okay, one of the reasons he's been talking about going up to 147 pounds, do you really think that Josh Taylor has any shot at 147 pounds against Boots Ennis or any of these other guys? No, no, he does not. So that's the reason why uh, for you people that aren't knowledgeable in the sport of boxing, for you people that criticize uh, the abilities of a Subriel Matias who's knocked everybody out, who's able to cut off the ring, who's got better defense than what you guys think, who actually is a destroyer, who is a generational fighter, throwback fighter, this guy is one of a kind, my friends, all right? Why does these Champions and former champions from 1 to 10 that I just spoke about, including Sander Martin, who I believe has a shot or uh, um, uh, I believe he's a mandatory for one of these titles. I, I can't remember. He is... I would have to look, but I, I, I believe he's got a shot at uh, one of these guys. I can't remember who. All right. But anyway, uh, guys, that is my point. Uh, you know, don't criticize before and don't make comments if you're not, if you haven't done your homework, if you haven't researched the fighter, if you haven't seen his fights, if you haven't looked at the opponents this, 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 this uh, champion or this great prospect has. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people nowadays uh, 
they try to get by by uh, just making uh, off the wall comments and uh, without even knowing. And, and, and basically what they're doing is they're looking ignorant for those those of us who know a little bit about the sport, who's been following for a long time, uh, these are either biased, all right, or ignorant comments, all right? And I can forgive the, the ignorance because ignorance uh, is fixable. When you're biased to, towards a fighter, just because, you know, envy or whatever other um, type of, of um, reason you have to hate this fighter, all right, uh, that, that, that is worst. But anyway, guys, I just want to uh, run this by you real quick today, Sunday. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice day here in Miami, kind of uh, um, gloomy, whatnot, but uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Why doesn't Ryan Garcia call out uh, Subriel Matias? Why doesn't any of these guys call out Subriel Matias? Uh, Arnold Barboza called them out. And uh, so did, I believe, uh, Michelle Rivera, all right? It would destroy both of these guys. If I was uh, Suriel Matias' team, I'd try to stay active as much as possible and force the hand of some of these other champions and some of these other organizations say, you know what, let's get it on. All right, guys, anyway, this is all for now. Until next episode, this is Coach Mario from Warriors Pride Boxing Academy, owner and head coach. Uh, with another episode of Inside the Ropes saying goodbye, hasta la vista, God bless you all, and peace.